Hello everyone, welcome to the Forza Knife Channel. With all the excitement surrounding the release of the Victorinox Venture and the consequent interest in small, lightweight, simply built, fixed blade camp knives, I've been looking for alternatives. I set out in search of the universal knife, that's to say the most versatile possible, and one that could appeal to as many of us as possible, with a price limit of $200. The knife you'd carry with you, without hesitation, for a walk in the wilderness. Mora's entry-level knives are, on the whole, excellent value for money for outdoor use. So I went looking for other small, versatile, fixed-blade knives and found a Boker knife. It's the Bronco. When I tested the Victorinox Venture, I was a bit put off, as I damaged the blade without even noticing. I refer you to the video presentation of the Venture. The conclusion was that such a fine edge offered excellent penetration and therefore cutting capacity, but was inevitably fragile. A very pleasant knife to handle, but one that revealed its limitations in withstanding shocks, despite the fact that the Venture is presented by Victorinox as designed for adventure, for bushcraft. Made from a steel renowned for its exceptional robustness, a knife of unfailing reliability, from hiking to camping to survival. So the Venture was supposed to be able to endure a variety of bushcraft and even survival operations. I can understand a manufacturer touting the capabilities of its product, but purchasers risk disillusionment if, like me, they damage the blade of their knife during a simple cut on the fly. One could therefore wonder about the limits of this knife, and perhaps they could have been pushed back if the blade had been formed by another, harder and more resistant steel. One of the steels that comes to mind to satisfy these criteria is CPM3V, an American alloy from Crucible Industries obtained by powder metallurgy, and which is among the most resistant to fracture thanks to its shock tolerance and elasticity. This reduces the risk of chipping. These properties are due to a relatively low carbon and chromium content, as well as a high proportion of vanadium. The addition of chromium provides corrosion resistance, but during the process chromium carbides are generated, and these are quite large in structure, making the steel brittle. Less chromium means more resilience, but the alloy will be less resistant to corrosion. Fortunately, the CPM3V's susceptibility to rust remains moderate, but you do need to take a few precautions, notably not to leave the knife in contact with moisture for too long. By way of comparison, CPM3V is slightly more resistant to corrosion than D2 steel. I have tested D2 steel at length, and despite numerous exposures to water, it has not shown the slightest rust. We can therefore be confident about the 3V's resistance to corrosion. But if you have any feedback on CPM3V and its corrosion resistance, please let us know in the comments. The new MagnaCut steel is extremely resistant to corrosion, with superior edge retention, but not as strong as CPM3V. My information on steels comes from a variety of sources and cross-checked data. I've compiled composition sheets for over 70 steels and their respective proportions in various elements such as carbon, chromium, molybdenum, and cobalt. It's a lot of work, but it makes it possible to compare the composition of steels. So if you're looking for strength, which I think is an important criterion for a fine, sharp blade, and you're not using the knife in a particularly damp or marine environment, then this Bronco seems to me to have some very interesting characteristics. A 420 HC steel of comparable strength could also have done the trick. It's highly resistant to corrosion, but dulls quickly. It would have made a low-cost knife, but experience shows that for these thin blades, you also need sufficient hardness to keep the edge of the blade in good condition. In metallurgy, compromises have to be made. It's no accident that I've listed over 70 different steels used in cutlery. The reason for this diversity is to meet a need, and in particular to be able to choose the alloy according to the intended use of the knife, but also the geometry of the blade. It's a whole set of specifications that must be taken into consideration when designing a knife. I haven't yet featured a Boker knife in a video specifically dedicated to one of their models, and I'm delighted to start with this Bronco, which fits in well with the type of functional, all-purpose knife I appreciate. I was also pleasantly surprised by the amount of information on this knife's presentation page on the Boker website. Some brands are very stingy with information, while others give us long commercial tirades of no interest. With Boker, the choice of materials is explained. A word about Boker, whose logo symbolizes a tree. 
The company has been based in Germany's Blade City, Solingen, since 1869. Over 150 years of experience have made Boker a world leader in industrial cutlery. Boker manufactures all types of knives. When I unpacked this Bronco, I was much more impressed than in the photo. It inspires confidence and looks solid. That's a good start. This Bronco knife is not a direct competitor to the Venture, as it is much more expensive due to its much higher grade steel. Nearly twice as expensive as the Venture, and some 50 euros more expensive than the Venture Pro and its somewhat gimmicky sheath. However, the Bronco is clearly a competitor to the Benchmade Puko, as it has very similar characteristics. The Bronco has been designed for versatility. Boker claims that this knife is intended for outdoor activities such as bushcraft, hiking, camping, fishing, hunting, and is suitable for search and rescue teams. The perfect knife doesn't exist, but a small knife that's practical to carry, sturdy and versatile is conceivable, and I think this Bronco is the perfect example. The drop point blade is a saber grind. This is the most versatile cut, enabling you to perform both fine and heavy tasks as the cutting edge widens, making the blade quite solid. The knife can perform bushcraft operations, but bear in mind that it's still a small knife and you shouldn't ask too much of it. I tested it for batoning on small logs and it coped well. In fact, it proved to be very efficient. The through tang ensures structural rigidity and solidity. The protruding heel allows you to scrape the fire lighter that comes attached to the case. There's also a hole for a lanyard at the end of the handle. Like the Venture Victorinox, the handle is made of TPE, thermoplastic elastomer, it is, however, more rubbery. The same handle texture was used on Steel Will Knives, a brand that offered excellent mid-range knives but has suddenly disappeared from the radar. The advantage of a rubbery TPE handle that completely encloses the through tang is that it absorbs vibrations for greater comfort and prevents contact with the steel. This is important when temperatures are very low, as steel is a conductor that will pump heat from the hand. The non-slip structure ensures a secure grip in wet conditions. Let's compare different small outdoor knives with comparative tables. Here are the technical specifications of the Victorinox Venture and the Boker Bronco. Both knives are the same length, but the Bronco's blade is zero, 39 inch longer and slightly thicker. The difference lies in the steel and the grinds. Let's take a look at the characteristics of the Benchmade Pulco and the Bronco, which are sold at roughly the same price. The Bronco's blade is zero, 79 inch longer than the Benchmade Pulco's, but apart from that, the knives are quite similar. We could also compare the Bronco with the CJRB Hyperlite, which is smaller and lighter and of full tang construction with an ARRPM 9 powdered steel blade or compare it with the Martini Suomi with its X46 CR13 steel blade and curly birch handle. And finally, here are the features of the Mora Companion, the least expensive but nonetheless effective and resistant. A thermoformed handle fixed to the tang can't be changed easily if damaged, unlike the Micarta or G10 scales of full tang knives. However, the Bronco's lifetime warranty is reassuring. The warranty includes replacement parts and labor costs, but as with every brand, damage resulting from misuse of the knife is not covered by the warranty. Nevertheless, should the TPE handle deteriorate or become abnormally detached from the tang, this will in principle be covered by the Boker warranty. A handle with a flush tang surface is also more solid, especially when it comes to absorbing shocks when hammering. However, you should also take into account the advantages of an overlapping TPE handle like the Bronco's, which provides good vibration damping and limits heat loss in cold weather due to this elastomer's very low thermal conductivity. There's no gap between the tang and the handle, so there's little risk of water intrusion under the handle, so little risk of hidden corrosion. We can only regret that the handle isn't a little wider to have more contact surface with the palm of the hand, and thus better distribute pressure when forcing is required. But I can't advise you enough to use gloves when undertaking intensive tasks with your knife. The leather sheath is also serious business. The knife is stored deep inside the sheath. Good retention and protection are assured. In general, the inner leather provides a good grip, especially as it's in contact with the rubbery TPE and the carvings on the handle. The thick, stiff leather will undoubtedly guarantee this case's longevity. 
especially as the stitching also appears to be of high quality. The leather lends a touch of rusticity and prestige to the whole, as leather is a natural and noble material that has been used for millennia and whose quality is rarely matched by synthetic materials. A large buckle with snap allows the knife to be attached to a belt or backpack in two positions, high or low. The fire steel supplied with the knife and firmly attached to the sheath in a small leather sheath is made by world leader Light My Fire. It seems to me to be the equivalent of the army model. It can be fired 12,000 times. That's almost a lifetime of use. You can remove it if you want to lighten up for transport. I've carried out various tests with the Bronco, and I have to say that it's now one of my favorite knives. It's a small knife that inspires confidence. It doesn't slice as easily as the Victorinox Venture, and that's to be expected as its cutting edge widens more behind the edge, but it performs well in most tasks. The paracord cutting test is very conclusive, such as lifting wood chips, making small batoning, and cutting food. It's a handy, well-balanced knife, and despite its rather basic design, I think it has a nice style. In conclusion, the Bronco's strong point is undeniably its CPM3 V steel blade, one of the best alloys for outdoor knives due to its solidity. Its longer blade than that of its competitors is also an asset for certain tasks. The stonewashed finish reduces the visibility of scratches, ensuring that the knife retains its attractive appearance. The saber grind is efficient for multiple uses. The ergonomic handle offers a very good grip. The knife comes with a very good leather sheath and a fire steel worth around $1.16. The Bronco is therefore good value for money if you take all these elements into account. Well-made leather sheath, quality fire steel, and above all, it's steel. I consider the Bronco to be an excellent little outdoor knife, a reliable knife that deserves to be known. If Boker could also offer an equivalent model with Micarta or G10 scales, I think it would be even more popular. This Bronco is the kind of all-purpose knife I'm looking for. Small in size, light enough to be easily transported, pleasant to handle, with a handle that provides grip and good vibration damping, and above all, a solid blade. In my opinion, it ticks all the boxes for a good little outdoor knife. It's up to you to tell me what you think. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and found these comparison tables useful. If so, please feel free to like, subscribe, or even share the video. Thanks and see you soon with more knives.